All right, today we're going to finish up this vending machine by adding in the um, entity called a point template, which is what allows us to duplicate objects and spawn them into the world using an output from another thing, whether it's a button or a trigger or whatever you want. So let's take a look at the sample that we're going to be working with today. All right. So um, once we finish this, we're going to take this vending machine prop here. We're going to put it over the top of this um, object that we built. Now remember, yours, your vending machine brushes, these need to be done in no draw. I did them in trigger just so you guys could see kind of the inner workings of my vending machine. But once we're done with it, this is all going to be done in no draw. Okay. So this will go over the top of this. This will be done completely in no draw. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so you can see there's a big old pile of cans there. I've got a button right here, which I will line up with these buttons once we get everything set. But when I interact with that button, you can see it's spawning two cans. And I can just sit here and spam this button and it'll keep spawning can after can. All right, so that is what we're gonna work on. Let's go back to the editor and take a look at all the pieces for it. So yesterday, you should have built something that looked like this, a no-draw box for your vending machine. Um, make sure you put a lid on it, because otherwise the player is going to be able to jump to the inside, which would be bad. On the inside, I've got sort of a little chute right here, which is where I'm going to spawn the cans. Now notice this thing has sides all the way around. It's got a front, a left, and a right, and a back, and... It's got the whole thing here because we don't want these cans to fall off and get inside the machine. Since they're physics enabled objects, they could bounce around and, and make noise and glitch. So I saw a couple when I was running through assignments that were turned in and people didn't put sides on this. So it needs to have sides. You've got to have something, a nice chute for this thing to drop into. All right, so let's start with the objects that we're going to drop into the game. So this guy right here, we'll start with this. So we're going to go to our entity tool. You're going to come over to objects. You're going to type in prop physics. Okay. So entity tool, prop physics. You're going to drop in the empty entity, the little box here. Take your selection tool open it up and once you do that what I want you to do is name it so I named mine uh, test can you can call it whatever you want remember no spaces no special characters um, let's see what else do we have to do to this not a whole lot that's it okay so it's just a prop now it's got to be a physics prop now remember, if it's something, if you're using something that's not um, meant to be a physics prop, you can always use physics override if you need to. And how can I tell? Well, when I look at the world model, if I go to browse, if I look under info, you'll see these checkboxes here. So this can can be either static or physics. So that means if I put it into the game as a prop static, it'll be good. If I put it in as a prop physics, it'll be good. If I tried to put it in as a prop dynamic, the can would not show up in the game. So remember, the fix for that is we have our overrides. So if I, if I needed this can to be dynamic for some reason, I could use prop dynamic override. Same thing with physics. If you have an object that you want to use as a physics prop, but it's not a physics prop, you can use your prop physics override. But in this case, the can is a physics prop, so we're going to say prop physics. We're just simply going to name it. And then go ahead and position it in the delivery chute so that it's not touching the sides or anything, so it's ready to drop and be delivered to the player. Okay, don't worry about the second can right now. We're going to do the first one, and then we'll come back to the second one. All right. Now, somewhere around the vending machine, doesn't matter where you want to put it, but we are going to drop in this guy right here. So this is called a point template. So you're going to go to your entity tool, go to the objects, 
type in point template this one right here once you do that go ahead and open it up we're gonna name it and remember no spaces no special characters now you'll notice there are all these different template options here it can spawn all of these at once okay so this is a lot it can do 16 objects at one time so um, you'll remember from my demo that mine was dropping two cans at once that's because I have template one and template two defined so if I went through here and put an object into all of these spots when I use this point template spawner it would spawn every single item on this list all right so for now we're just gonna have this first one so we're gonna have our name and then in template one I want you to put the name of whatever you named that can don't worry about the second one right now we'll come back and get that but this first template position this guy right here is going to be the name of this can that you just put in so I named mine test can so for this guy template one is test can all right so I named it and I told it what to spawn under flags just leave them the way I show them here all right now let's go back to the front of the vending machine so we need a button for the player to interact with so for this I took my block tool this I went ahead and made a box um, it's going to be no draw on yours so I remember I'm using trigger just so you can see it in game but in reality this is going to be no draw so I would type in browse no draw press enter and this will become my button that I'm going to activate the vending machine with once you create the button go to your selection tool right click tie to entity and then let's go to the button I've already created which is this one right here so once you go tie to entity you're gonna drop your class and go to function button click apply All right, so we created a block using no draw it's gonna be our button we right click on it tie to entity this box here is going to pop up under class you're going to set it to function button click apply a couple times we're going to name it now I always like to name all my things that tells me what it is then like the name of it so this is a button so if you look through here you would see I've got things sort of grouped so that's how I like to name things you can do it however you like but I named this thing button underscore vending machine. Under sounds, if you'd like a sound for when you press the button, go ahead and do that. Delay, this is how long it takes for the button to reset. The default is three. I put it to one so I could kind of spam it a little bit. Um, your choice doesn't really matter under flags we're gonna say don't move because remember in, in source these buttons retract when you press them so we don't want the button to retract so I'm gonna say don't move use activates nothing else in here needs to be checked don't move use activates go ahead and hit apply on our outputs we're gonna have a single output so we're gonna click add and then for your output named this is the action that the button does so if you click on this these are all things that buttons can do okay so I'm gonna say on pressed which means we press the button the target entity named so this is telling the button who to talk to so in this case I want it to talk to that little spawner thing that I put out back here this so mine is called spawner underscore can and then via this input is what do we want to do once you know when we talk to this guy what do we want to tell this to do 
and one of the options will be force spawn. So what that's doing is I press the button, it's gonna tell the spawner to force a spawn. Click apply, close that. All right. Now let's go ahead and test this. So there's my vending machine, there's my button, I'm going to press it. Now remember mine is spawning two cans, yours should only be spawning one at this point. Simple. Alright, let's go back to the editor. Now to finalize this, what we would do is we would put this over the top of it in a position where you know, the button was showing and all that good stuff. So you would place this so that this was inside this. So these two things were kind of together. We want to line up the little chute right here so they're together. Sort of like that. Let's run this and test it again, see what it looks like. All right, we're almost done. We have one more thing to do. All right, now remember, this trigger on yours should be no draw, so it should be all invisible. But now when I go over to this thing, I've got cans coming out of this thing. All right, last thing we got to do here. The vending machine. All right, so the vending machine, if we leave it as a solid prop, when we spawn cans inside of it, they're going to go shooting all over the place. So for the vending machine, what I want you to do is select your vending machine. And it is a prop dynamic override. Let's scroll down where it says collisions. We have a few options here. And we would like to use not solid, okay? If you use any of these other ones, it's gonna make this a solid entity and when you try to spawn one solid inside of another solid, you're gonna get all kinds of weird issues. So we're gonna set collisions to not solid. Apply. And then go ahead and reassemble this thing and, um, and it should work. So remember, this should be no draw. This has no collision set up on it. So what I would like you guys to do is add a second button beneath this button. So it would look something like this. And I want the second button to spawn this can right here. So we're gonna make the vending machine dispense two different cans. So I already showed you how to do this one right here with this top button. I want you to add a second button that dispenses this can, okay? Or any other object that you want, but this can is positively in the Half-Life 2 assets. So, so your assignment is to get this first one spawning, get the blue can working. Then I want you to make a second button, which means you're gonna have to have a second point template so you're going to have a can, a second can, a second button, and a second point template in order to dispense that second can. So your point template is not going to have two objects on it. Okay. So it's going to look like this. You're going to have the name of it and the one object that it's going to spawn. And then right next to that, you're going to have a second point template that's going to spawn the second can. So we're going to have two buttons, two point templates, and two physics props that get dispensed out of this vending machine. Once you've got it all done, remember to assemble it and then make me a video of the whole thing working. Alright, that is what we're doing today.